Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi, wa man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, another beautiful night of Ramadan where we spend it with each other, and we spend it worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a jama'ah. Love, my dear brothers, is a very motivating factor. Love the love that is felt between the mother to the child is something strong and deep. The love between the husband and the wife in the first month of marriage is very deep. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> 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 love throughout marriage, it is very deep. Every time you argue with your spouse, the love is that which brings you back together. Every time you have an issue of your child, the love is that which brings you back together. Every time you have an issue of your parents, the love that you have for each other brings you back together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, and alhamdulillah we've had, we've lived this journey over the last few days of hearing the recitation of, of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ that there are from the people, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا They take, besides Allah, things that they love as they should love, of, as they should love Allah. The Mufassirin, the explainers of the Qur'an, they mentioned that this ayah is about the mushrikeen who would take their idols and worship them besides Allah and have a deep love and connection to the idol like they should have for Allah. However, those believers, their love for Allah is stronger. Let me explain this verse. The Mufassirin, they mentioned that the idol worshippers, when they would place gods beside Allah Azza wa Jal to venerate and to love and to worship, they would love them like they would love Allah. However, their love is different to that of the believers. The love that the idol worshippers had for those idols only existed when benefits would come to them. So when they lived a happy life, when they thought that these idols were giving them blessings, when they thought that these, these materials were, were, the, were the luck of their lives, the contrast between them and the believers is that the love of the believers between them and Allah Azza wa Jal is in good times and in bad times. Where the idol worshippers would throw away their idols during bad times. They would disbelieve in their idols during bad times. And they would call upon Allah during those hard times. However, with the believers, their belief and their love is stronger for Allah Azza wa Jal than any of these mushrikeen had for their idols due to the way that they dealt with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their love didn't waver according to how they traversed in life. Their love didn't waver due to what was happening to them and due to the trials or due to the blessings that were coming towards them. And this ayah clearly places for the believers a clear principle in our aqidah, in our belief. And that is the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For verily, the person is not a believer. No one can truly believe until they have this love inside them towards the Creator. The Creator who sustains them. The Creator who looks after them. The Creator who allows them to breathe. The Creator who allows them to worship Him. The Creator that gives them everything in this life. And the Creator that will take care of them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. This love between us as believers and Allah Azza wa Jal should be the foremost thing that's in our minds. And I mention this because love is a motivating factor. It influences us to do many things. The basis of our worship towards Allah Azza wa Jal shouldn't be hoping for Jannah, nor should it be fearing from the hellfire. The basis, these are secondary to this base. The basis of our worship between us and Allah should be based upon love. It should be based upon love. 
When you cover your aura, it should be based upon you loving Allah Azza wa Jal and wanting to follow His commands. When you fast in Ramadan, it should be based upon you loving Allah and wanting to obey His commands. When you pray the night prayers, it is because you want to get closer to Allah to receive His love. When the sister wears proper hijab, jilbab, niqab, it is between her and Allah to increase her love between her and Allah. When you do an act, my dear brother and my dear sister, do it with intentionality. Am I doing this? Did I come to MIA tonight because I like the vibe? Because there's a nice imam, great recitation? Or is it because I want to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did I fast today because everyone else is fasting? Because I'm a Muslim and it'd be shameful if I didn't? Or is it because between me and Allah, I want to gain His love? Between me and Allah, I want to feel that spirituality. Between me and Allah, I want to have those blessings in my life. Between me and Allah, I want Allah to know that within my heart, the deepest, change, the deepest chamber in my heart, that I have this deep love for Him. And the contrast between us as believers in the 21st century in Sydney, Australia, and those believers that were in Medina and Mecca under the righteous Khalifa, the difference is we choose to worship Allah in public. They had no choice. It was the government back then. They had to worship Allah in public. If someone was not praying, they would be persecuted. If someone was not fasting, they would be persecuted, and rightly so. However, here, in the 21st century, the reward between you and Allah, Allahu Akbar, because you choose to worship Him. You choose to fast. You choose to pray the night prayers. You choose to spend your time Attempting to gain the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. And what happens to the one who reaches this level? As paraphrased in the Hadith Qudsi, Allah Azza wa Jal, when He loves a servant, a slave, He calls out to Jibreel alayhi salam, and He says to him that I love so-and-so, and let the inhabitants of paradise know that I love so-and-so. So Jibreel then calls out to the inhabitants of paradise, the other malaika, and He says that Allah loves so-and-so. And then it is called out to the people of the earth that Allah loves so-and-so. Which now creates the love of the people and the honor of the people for this person. Allahu Akbar. This is for the one who spends their time working on the relationship between them and Allah Azza wa Jal. Al-Imam Al-Ghazali, and I'll finish with this. He mentions when Allah loves a person, when Allah loves a servant or a slave, when Allah loves a believer, He inspires within that believer to change and transform themselves inwardly and outwardly. The character between them and Allah inside changes the way that they deal with Allah Azza wa Jal in private and their outward appearance, their character with everyone else, it also changes. Imam Al-Ghazali mentioned that the person when the love of Allah is inspired and transformative on this individual, their speech changes, their action changes. They are able to have secluded conversations between them and Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal opens up for them His blessings. Allah Azza wa Jal takes care of all of their affairs. Allah Azza wa Jal detaches them, their hearts, from the dunya and from materialistic things. Allah Azza wa Jal creates for them a special bond between him and them, where they live in this dunya for a single purpose, and that is to attain and to keep working towards the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the love of Allah is the true love. As Imam al-Ghazali, he mentioned that the love of Allah between the person and Allah azza wa jal is the true love you should be working on. Everything else is a reflection of that. Everything else is a reflection of that. The love between the spouses, it is a reflection between you and your love for Allah Azza wa Jal. The reflection between the love of the parents and the children is a reflection between their love to Allah Azza wa Jal and their connection to Him. So ask yourself, my dear brother and my dear sister, before you do any act of worship, what is the purpose behind me doing this? Because everything becomes a habit at one point. We forget to have our intentions. We forget to, yani, as an example, in the morning when you have your shower, do we intend for ghusl or wudu? 
Or is it just we're trying to get out of the house and rush and quick and go to work and go to school? These moments where they can be transformative in the way that you are, but yani you deal with Allah Azza wa Jal. These moments that can change the way that you approach your day can happen each time it all takes for us to have intentionality towards our deeds. So from today, ask yourself, everything that you do, from the clothes that you wear, to the items that you consume, to the good things that you, ta- that, that you say to each other, to the worship that you do. What is the purpose behind this worship? Is it for me to gain the love of Allah Azza wa Jal? If it is, then how should that worship or action be for Allah to accept it from me? For that, we'll leave for another talk. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Wa astaghfirukallahumma wa atubu ilayk.